Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the life and letters of the Apostle Peter. And we're in 2 Peter chapter 3 uh, today. We have three more uh, lessons before we move on to our next topic. And I hope you've enjoyed the spending this time with Peter and listening to Peter in his letters as much as I have. I, I, just, uh, I just enjoy his company and am blessed by him as a, as a brother and a mentor and as a mouthpiece for the Holy Spirit. And I hope that you felt the same way. Second Peter, teaching Christians how to survive the persecution that's ha uh, happening. In First Peter, Second Peter, how to survive the false teaching that they are beginning to truly experience and will continue ex to experience even to this day. Yesterday, when we talked about chapter two, we said that he, uh, he described how we shall know them. <laughs> who are these people? These are people who are disrespectful. These are people who are selfish. These are people who um, uh, indulge their senses. These are people who deny essential biblical truth. These um, are people who are really uh, out for money. Um, and, and, and the second thing he reminded us yesterday is that God is able to rescue the righteous and punish the wicked. And he used Noah as an example. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 3, he uses Noah in the exact same way as an example of rescue. Second Peter, he uses him in chapter 2 as an example of rescue and as an example of punishment and judgment in chapter 3. He talked about Lot and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, extreme cases. And he's going to come back to Noah today and look ahead to the end of time. So let's begin with chapter 3. I'll be reading verses 1 through 7 for today. This is now, beloved, the second letter I'm writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken to you by the apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. When they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. Excuse me. But the present heavens and earth, by his word, are being reserved for fire and kept to the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. So much to notice here and so many warnings that we don't become false teachers ourselves, misusing scripture and asserting things that are not in the word of God. He refers to 1 Peter. And so those folks in Turkey <laughs> that have received this, that letter are receiving this one too, even though it is addressed more universally to everyone. And notice in verse 2, and this is the first time he does it, but he'll do it again that you should remember the word spoken before him by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. The Old Testament is scripture, the New Testament is scripture, and they are equally scripture. That the, that the Old Testament is God's world, word revealed through the prophets, the New Testament is God's word revealed through the apostles, and they are equally uh, applicable uh, to you. And so let's notice that. And he talks about mockers with their mocking, and the thing that they're mocking is that God hasn't come yet. And he's saying they have forgotten everything. And he takes us back to the ark. If you think things always happen the way they always do, uh, from the very beginning, you have forgotten the ark. Because before the ark event, what happened from creation until then was that there was no rain. And then God came and destroyed everything with water. So did you forget that? And did you also forget that God promised after that event that he was not going to ever uh, do that again, that God was going to uh, uh, take care of the earth um, and never destroy it again by water. That's in chapter 8, Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 through 22. So this time it's going to be fire. It's not going to be water. It's going to be fire. God promised it wouldn't be water. 
this time it's going to be fire and it's going to come period it's going to come uh, if you don't believe that then you have forgotten human history and that's what he says now another um, note before we leave the heavens and the earth and new heaven and a new earth and all this what does this mean heavens here and in passages like this heaven and earth and heavens and earth doesn't mean does not include God's abode does not include God's abode okay there is God's throne there's the place where God is right that's we often refer to that as heaven and the Bible sometimes refers to that as heaven too but in Genesis 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the heavens is the universe heavens is the universe galaxies the heavens are the galaxies and we live in one of those galaxies and on one planet and on that tiny planet that 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 just singular pixel of light uh, in the photograph by the Voyager spacecraft as it left our, our our solar system that's the place God created as a garden for humans to live on and it's special because we're special to him so when you when you when you read that the heavens and the earth are going to be destroyed it doesn't mean that God is going to destroy the place where he exists if we can even think about God be existing in a particular place and not all places that's not going to happen. And when he talks about a new heaven and a new earth, it doesn't mean that God's going to be building another planet. You know, that's not going to happen. It's not like in um, Hitchhiker's Guide where you just build planets. You can get a ward for the fjords. That's not what the Bible says. Uh, it, it just means a new sphere, a new existence, a new place is going to be made. Um, and God's going to create that place, that space. What he made in Genesis 1-1 is gone. He's going to make something new. That's all that means. Okay? So let's not assert that it means anything else. Well, I got a little animated about that. I'm sorry. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to continue on. as We're going to talk about um, our role in the second coming. That's kind of a mind-blowing thought, but it's something that he talks about. And we'll talk about it too tomorrow. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.